Neuromarketing is, I mean, it's kind of a new area, I guess, of research, but basically it's a, a discipline which allows you to understand the seat of all human decision making. So measuring the subconscious mind in order to get marketing uh, insight to understand how you optimize marketing communication. So we specifically um, at NeuroInsight, we use something called SST or steady state topography. And um, some companies out there use EEG, which is the bog standard stuff you get in, in a hospital. But the problem with EEG is there's quite a lot of noise in the data because our brains work at a lot of frequencies. And so you do get quite noisy data. And SST, which is what we use, is proprietary. It was invented by a neuroscience professor called Richard Silverstein. He's um, based out of Melbourne and he's our founder. And he created it because he was doing work on ADHD patients, right? And um, getting ADHD patients to sit still, do the same thing on repeat while you take multiple readings so that your data is nice and clean. Quite hard. So, you know, he invented this amazing bit of tech and we came into existence in the UK about 10 years ago, but NeuroInsight in Australia has been running for about 16 years, I think now. So... Yeah, the whole field, it, it's kind of a, I mean, it sort of straddles market research and marketing. Um, and it's all about understanding and dissecting, you know, content, communication, media context, and all that other good stuff. Yeah. And you actually published a white paper, I think last year, wasn't it? Looking beyond the silos in the modern age of uh, media. So what were your findings from that? I mean, I really enjoyed reading it and there were a few things that surprised me even in it I think but what were the general findings and what was the reception like in the industry so that paper was a real labor of love because it came about from a sort of compiling loads of work we'd done around media context so it I'll, I'll kind of answer your second question first in terms of the reception it was great people were really happy to have all of that stuff in one place. I think the whole industry, so marketing, advertising, media, that whole industry is facing the fact that the landscape is just so fragmented, cluttered, mixed, full, kind of to the brim, you know, and it's not just about TV, radio, print magazine, out of home, you know, it's People are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. But then also you've got Alexa, you know, doing advertising. You've got, you're on a mobile phone versus a laptop. You know, you're going out for a run and you've got your podcast in and there's sponsored advertising in there. And so there's actually so many ways in which people are being bombarded with communication. And that is basically what the findings were about. It was that context actually matters. And that your creative, so your creative needs to be effective, the actual stuff that you make, the ad that you make, but the medium within which it's positioned can have a massive impact on how it's received. That was kind of the crux of that report. No, it's super interesting. Now it has to be a lot more nuanced and it pulls on um, emotions and how things make you feel rather than how things are going to uh, affect your wallet, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think people are, are really understanding now that the way to communicate to human beings is through uh, emotional storytelling. So our brains, so what we know from the work that we do, is our brains don't actually care about brands. You know, they, they really don't. What they're interested in is stories. So we make sense of our world and like we create our reality and our context through the stories that we're told all the way through our lives. So like when we're kids, anything that our parents tell us, the TV programs that are in the background of our lives, the books that we read, the clothes that we wear, everything around us, that constructs the reality that we live in. And so finally, you know, we've gotten to this point where ad in advertising and, and the creators in the advertising world are brilliant, right? They are, there really are some fantastic people out there who understand the power of story but we also know that so for the work that we do we look at what goes into memory that's the most important thing so if you encode something into your long-term memory that means it's going to drive some sort of future action or behavior change or purchase and all of our memories are colored by an emotion that's an evolutionary mechanism in humans right it's for our survival and 
I'm sure you've seen it because we all love a Disney film. The film Inside Out. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. So they spoke, you'll like this, they spoke to neuroscientists when they made it. I've seen a couple of interviews of, of this on, on YouTube and stuff. But they spoke to neuroscientists because that analogy of having, you know, the little balls are different colors. Mm. True. You know, our memories are colored by an emotion. And so having different types of, uh, you know, emotional responses or having very emotionally appealing or emotionally driven, I guess, advertising is what's really key now. 